Whether you are a graduate student or pursuing a master's degree, let's dive into a fascinating topic that lies at the heart of molecular biology and biotechnology, the recombinant DNA technology. Using this technology, you can produce multiple copies of gene of interest or obtain a specific protein in large quantities or genetically modify an organism. We will discuss what recombinant DNA technology is and the basic steps involved in recombinant DNA technology or gene cloning. Recombinant DNA technology is a set of techniques used to manipulate and combine DNA fragments usually from different sources creating new combinations that are not found in the nature. This technology allows scientists to isolate specific genes and DNA sequences, manipulate them in various ways such as amplifying them, reintroducing them into other organisms or getting a specific protein expressed in certain ways. In recombinant DNA technology, you need desired DNA fragments, vector, several molecular tools such as restriction endonucleases, DNA ligase and recombinases to generate a recombinant DNA. This is followed by transformation, selection of transformants containing recombinant DNA on a suitable nutrient media. To understand this better, let's see the basic steps involved in recombinant DNA technology. The first step is the isolation of desired DNA fragment. Generally, a specific gene is obtained through cDNA or plasmid or genome, or it may be produced by PCR amplification. If the purpose is getting gene expression, do take care of open reading frame so that the protein will get expressed properly. The next step is selection of a suitable vector. You may choose a cloning vector if the purpose is gene multiplication or an expression vector if the purpose is to get expression product that is a specific protein or you may choose a binary vector if the purpose is developing genetically modified organism. All these vectors should have one or more markers such as GUS, GFP, RUBY or antibiotic resistance gene for screening or selection of transformed cells containing the desired DNA fragment. A cloning vector has a high capacity of cell replication to produce large copies of DNA insert, for example PBR322. On the other hand, the expression vector has regulatory signals, promoters and terminator sequences for protein expression and its purification. The promoter is usually strong and constitutive that results in production of large number of copies of target DNA, for example, PUC19 vector. But inducible promoter or tissue specific promoter are also used depending upon the need. For example, if you want a specific protein to be expressed only in leaf or in seed. Binary vectors have disarmed TI plasmid containing recombinant DNA within the tDNA borders for integration into plant genome using agrobacterium. The next step is restriction digestion of both the DNA fragments that is the DNA insert and the vector. Both the vector and the DNA insert must first be restriction digested using suitable restriction endonuclease type 2. Restriction sites can also be created at both the ends of DNA insert during PCR amplification using primers with restriction site sequence of interest. Care should be taken that the same restriction site should be present in the vector where the target DNA has to be inserted. Restriction digestion helps to orient and ligate the target of interest in the right direction which is essential for protein expression. For gene multiplication, the orientation of ligated product is not essential. In the next step, we will integrate this DNA of interest also known as the DNA insert into a suitable plasmid or phage using a molecular glue known as DNA ligase. The DNA ligase forms a covalent bond between the 3' OH and 5' phosphate. Two or more DNA fragments or vector once ligated are termed as recombinant DNA or gene chimera. In recent research, recombination based gene cloning is also becoming very popular that eliminates the use of restriction digestion for developing the recombinant DNA. For example, Gibson based assembly of two or more DNA fragments. It is more efficient way of developing recombinant DNA in gene cloning which is otherwise difficult using restriction and ligation. Next, the recombinant DNA is incorporated in a suitable host such as bacteria like E. coli or yeast like Saccharomyces cerevisiae for transformation. The host provides energy and all the necessary machinery for DNA replication and protein synthesis. 
the next important step is selection of transformed cells. After transformation, you will get a mixture of transformed and non-transformed cells. And it is essential to prevent the non-transformed cells from multiplication. To prevent this, we grow them on a media containing suitable antibiotics on which only the transformed cells can grow. This is because only the transformed cells will have the antibiotic resistance genes allowing them to survive and multiply. Or if the vector you have selected has a scorable marker such as GUS or GFP or like Z, you can visually or microscopically screen and select them for further multiplication. Once the host cell takes up the recombinant DNA and cultured on a suitable media, it begins to multiply DNA fragment or desired protein starts getting synthesized. You can extract the plasmid, restriction digest the desired fragment and separate it on the gel. Or you can collect the recombinant protein and purify it using suitable columns. If the purpose is genetic transformation of plants, the recombinant DNA is first transferred from E. coli to the agrobacterium, which is then transferred to the plant that needs to be genetically modified. Agrobacterium is the most commonly used bacteria for genetic transformation of eukaryotes. It is often regarded as a natural genetic engineer. This is because it has a unique ability to transfer the DNA fragments, naturally the tumor-inducing DNA fragments which lies within the tDNA to the plant cells. Once the DNA gets incorporated in the plant genome, it starts producing food for the bacterial growth. The interesting thing is that any DNA sequence within the tDNA can be transferred to the plant. So what researchers did was they replaced this tumor-inducing DNA fragments within the tDNA region with the DNA of their interest so that it gets incorporated in the plant genome. Once the DNA gets incorporated in the plant genome, the plant has to be screened and selected for further multiplication. There are endless applications of recombinant DNA technology. I will be soon uploading a dedicated video on it. Recombinant DNA technology is a passport to unlocking genetic mysteries. Whether you are unraveling the secrets of life or engineering novel solutions, this field continues to shape our world. If you find this information useful, make sure to explore my playlist covering a wide range of fascinating topics. From research and publishing to AI, plant tissue culture, markers, transcriptome analysis, genetics, nutrition and health, there is definitely something for everyone. Feel free to leave your suggestions in the comment below. I appreciate your feedback. Until next time, stay curious and see you in my next video.